right, so we're in part two of this uh, 1220 alpha 15 megahertz oscilloscope. And in the last video, I didn't uh, check the probe adjust. Uh, so I'm going to start off with that right now. And then we're going to go through some of these adjustments. I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, number one, the um, any PDF you find on this 1220 oscilloscope, even the one right from the... Uh, from the Keysight website, um, the scans are terrible. Um, you can get through some of the adjustment procedures and then it refers you to certain things and then those certain things, gra you know, graphics and stuff like that, the, the scans are just so bad you can't even make out what's, what they're even talking about there. So we're gonna go through some of the adjustments. There's not. There, there, there's a whole lot of adjustments, but there's not a lot that I'm going to need to actually do on this thing because uh, after going through the manual, I did find out what this uh, TV norm button does, uh, what it's used for, and that is um, for a, a, a composite video uh, sync pulse signals. That's what that's for, so if you're into the video stuff, you can use that um, I'm not so I'll probably never use that but uh, that's what that's for and um, don't know why my I've got my uh, manual up over here my computer's kind of running a little bit slow this morning so uh, that should come up here shortly and then um, anyway let's do this adjustment here you can see uh, that the adjustment it is producing a signal uh, it's a um, it's on point one milliseconds the time per division was on point one milliseconds and we had just shy of four divisions which would have made it a 2500 uh, cycle square wave or 2500 Hertz and um, we're just short of that four. So the, the manual actually says it's a 2,000 uh, hertz square wave. So we're right in the ballpark on that. So um, you can see that it's kind of cattywampus there. Let me get my little tweaker. So... We're gonna adjust this so that we uh, flatten this out. Right about there. So that's good. You can see we got the Okay, so I cleaned up all of these uh, switches and they all work perfectly as you can see it's not it's not intermittently blinking out where it was before so all of that's been cleaned up so that's a done deal uh, so now we're going to get into some measurements here let me find this in the manual where uh, I don't want to check out the new Adobe Acrobat reader if you go down here to about page, oh, I just passed it. You can see some of these scans here. They're just, they're just terrible. They're just absolutely terrible. And some of the words you can't even read on the text either. So, uh, like I said, we're not going to go through everything. But it all starts right here on page 4-8, I believe which is page 31 in the PDF. And like I said, no matter where you get this PDF from, it's all like this. So uh, if I want to do any more with it, then I'm going to do with it on this video. In the future, I'll probably find the actual hard copy and um, I will probably just uh, use that because this is ridiculous. So what this is telling me right here is, first of all, you need to check all your voltages. Let me go ahead and disconnect this probe now that we've done that part. You need to uh, check all your voltages with the DMM. 
and they're all on the vertical amplifier board all the test points basically what it says here is that the nine um, the 95 volt supply is adjustable it's an adjustable reference for the 12 volt supplies okay and the 210 volts and the 210 volt supply it is normally adjusted to produce highest accuracy on the 12 volt supply so the first thing it has you do is look at the 12 volt supply and adjust it within plus or minus uh, 50 millivolts or 0 0.05 volts so I'm gonna get this thing turned around where you can see the test points and we'll test that out real quick So all the test points are right here on the vertical board, right here next to the transformer. And we're just going to set our multimeter up to, uh, well, we'll go down to 60 volts and see if I can get that in the shot, maybe. All right. Go down to 60 volts DC and we'll clip this little jobber. Let's see what we get. All right, so that should be our ground point and our. 95 volt rail is right or our 95 volt test point is right here we want to we want to do our um, 12 volt test point though to begin with and the plus 12 volts is right here and we got 11.967 so that's within the 50 millivolts so, so we're good there and then the next step it tells us to do is go to the um, positive 5 and the positive 5 test point is I see the negative 12 positive 5 maybe let's see I don't know if that's so 95 or 5 that's the 95 so it's 95.9 um, I don't see the five at all. So let's see. Everything's silk screened on here. Well, let's look at the negative 12 because it's right next to the positive 12. And it's 11.95, so it's within 50 millivolts. So that's good. Let's go ahead and look at the 210. 210's right here. And it's showing 227. So on the two on the 210, let me scroll down here in the, in the manual here. On the 210, it says it needs to be 210 plus or minus 20 volts. So that's 227 so that's within 20 volts that's 17.3 volts off so that's good the only one I haven't seen yet is the okay the the 95 should be 95 plus or minus 2 so let's look at the 95 it's 95.9 it's good so the only one I haven't checked is the 5 volt rail and I actually don't even see it don't see the 5 volt rail test point. It says uh, transfer digital voltmeter to the 5 volt test point on A2, which is what I what all these other test points are on, but that 5 volt is not around those other four test points. So no 5 volt no 5 volt test point whatsoever 
Oh, there it is. Okay, so it's way, whoo, man, it's way back over here. So all these other ones are right here in this little area. I don't know if you can see where I'm pointing at. I think maybe I can get you over here. So this is your 210, this is your 95, this is your plus 12, this is your minus 12. And then the 5 is way over here. So we'll get a reading on that. And it is 4.9. And the um, manual says plus or minus uh, 0.25 volts. Okay, so it's 4.9, so it's good. So all of our voltages are good in this thing. So that's, you know, that's the main thing right there. That, that's a start. Now, ripple. Oh, my goodness. We may have some ripple, right? So I'm going to hook this thing up to an O-scope and see another O-scope and see how much ripple we have on this thing because I, I imagine that the filter caps probably need to be changed on this. Um, like I said, we're not going to go through this whole manual. It, it goes into, uh, you know, different waveforms and yada, 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 yada. just keeps on going. Um... I think as long as our voltages are good and our ripples good and I'm getting the accurate uh, measurements on the front, I'm happy with it. And I'm not going to be using this for, you know, as a calibrated piece of equipment anyway. So um, I'll be happy with it. So let's uh, let's look at this thing on the O-scope and see how much ripple we have. Okay, so I have this on... 50 volt. Let me get you over here where you can see the this oscope. All right, I have this on 50 volts. I know it's I know it's flashing on the screen, but I have this on 50 volts per division, and it's right almost to the. I don't know if I have this thing. Let's see if I have this thing. I don't have it quite down to the, okay. And it's almost up to the hundred. So remember we were reading like 96 or something like that. So, all right, so there's our DC voltage right there. We're just shy of the hundred mark. I'm on 50 volts per division. And I got it on DC couple right now. And so that's, you know, about 96 volts, whatever we read on the DMM. I'm going to go over to AC coupling. That brings us down to the zero line. And if we zoom in here, focus. I'm on 50 millivolts per division, and I'm not seeing any sign of ripple at all. So. Let's go over, oh, there's a little bit of something there. I don't know what that was. Okay, let's go over to the 210. And we have something here. Ooh. We have some ripple on this. Pretty significant. So I'm at uh, half a volt per division. And with my 10x, this is at half a volt per division. Um, and I'm getting almost two divisions, almost a full volt of ripple. On that 210 rail. So I imagine the caps need to be probably changed. Quite a bit of ripple. So that's good to know. All right. Well, okay. So we need to probably change these caps out. Um, all of them anyway. 
So, but that's good to know. Let's see what else we got over here. This says uh, set the line select selector. Let me turn this. There we go. Turn that off. It says set the line selector to 220 volts. See, I, I'm not going to test all this stuff out at 220 volts because I'm not. I'm not going to operate it that way. So a lot of this stuff, it's just really not something I want to do. It's not necessary. Let's see what we got here. All right. Yeah, I see. Okay. We're just going to we're going to look at the vertical gain and and all that and see what see what we're getting and see if it just matches up. All right, so let me turn this thing around. Get all this unclipped. Like I said, if I was going to use this thing, I would go through all the procedures. But I mean, if I was going to use it to and expect it to be a calibrated piece of equipment. So let's get this thing back into a position here. Where we can see it. All right, we got a really good. Intensity, focus. All right, so let's put a signal in this thing and see where we're at. I'll fire up my HP3325 synthesizer. We'll put some square waves and some. Also, another thing that I saw, and I'll show you this. As soon as I get this hooked up, um, so there's both channels. We're going to put a uh, let's see, one volt peak to peak, boom, and And then we're going to trigger on, this thing's supposed to trigger on A, normally. Focus this a little bit. There we go. A little bit of focus. Okay, so, as you can see on the camera, um, it's going, it's almost catching the, the the sweeps right like it's doing one line and then another line you, you you can see it every once in a while on the camera uh go back and forth between the two alternating right um it, you don't see it on the scope though um but i did find out this plus and minus is an invert function so when you do that it inverts the, the wave and you have to re-trigger obviously um And it inverts both of them. So that's weird. Um, there, there is no add function as far as I can see. Like to add the two together. So there's alpha. There's bravo. And you can trigger on bravo. As long as bravo is the only one. And then both of them. When both of them are out. I believe it's alpha. Yeah, it's alpha. Alpha only. And then you can invert it. And invert, 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 right? And then you can go to alpha by itself. Doesn't do anything. Bravo by itself. 
or you can push both of them in together and they alternate so interesting I got this one on 500 um, millivolts and this one on a volt so let me put them both together now see one of these is out of calibration here so that should be I'm on one volt peak to peak on my generator so that should be two divisions and that's where we're at right now this one they're pretty close they're really pretty close yep okay so that's and again I'm gonna have to go back over some of these controls and stuff and see if I can get to some of these other things because they are kind of nasty but it's weird how that is, is doing that in the camera like that every once in a while uh, the fresh rate the refresh rate I guess on the camera is uh, causing that to happen all right so beam finder yep yeah that's interesting okay Trigger. You know, I think if somebody just wants one of these things to do troubleshooting with, this this is just, you know, probably a very good scope to do that with. I think once I get the caps changed on it, a lot of things will will be better because of that high ripple on the. 210 volt rail so I think right now I'm just gonna uh, write down the the caps that I need and put them on order and get them in and then maybe I'll make a part three of this video where we uh, do a little more of this adjustments and stuff maybe uh, we'll definitely put it back on the scope and look at the ripple and see if that solved it and um, go from there. But right now it's doing all right. I, I, I mean, I can live with this. So... Oh, and by the way, I'm using a, um, to get, to get the same on each channel, I'm going through a T, right? But I've also got a, uh, feed through 50 ohm impedance matcher here. So I'm getting exactly the same reading on the scope as I'm actually putting out, uh, from my generator impedance, impedance wise. So. They make these 50 ohm matching uh, terminations as well, where you can just put it on there, but then you can't feed through it. Or you can just make one of these because basically all you have to do is just take a, a 50 ohm resistor and run it from, a, let's say you had a T. Let me take the second one off here. Let's see how the signal went up, excuse me, on channel A because I took the termination off it doubled in size right um, so now I'm going four divisions instead of two divisions but anyway you can actually take and uh, put a resistor up in that center conductor and then solder the other side of the resistor onto the as a matter of fact I'm going to demonstrate that right now to you I'll get a 50 ohm resistor And really, it doesn't have to be a 50 ohm resistor. It can be 
a 47 ohm resistor. So this resistor reads 48.9. If I turn this around here like this and just stick one end of this in here. And then bend the other end around. Let's see here. You see that? It went down to two, went down to two volts, or went down to two divisions, and then if I stick the resistor on there like I'm doing right now, it goes down to, I'm not making a good connection, there we go, but uh, it goes down to two divisions, see? So you can actually make one of these. If you don't have one of these terminations or a feed through like this, um, you can just build your own. Uh, get a T and 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 solder in a, a resistor and use that T as your as your termination um, easy peasy so they also make like they also make these types where there are no impedance in here it's just a, a feed through right so you could you could get one of those and and do the same thing on just a normal piece uh, but um or you can build a box um with a resistor in there all right so like i said uh, on the next video i'll have this thing recapped we'll look at the ripple again and we'll um we may go through a few more of the um the adjustments and um that would be it. I'll put this thing back together and I'll be using it. So thank you guys for watching.